Norway, famous for its stunning fjords and pristine environment. A place where the future of energy is not in the future anymore. Amid this tranquility, a change is happening. A change which will have an impact in countries far beyond Norway. Monday morning, on the Mastrofjord ferry. A busy commuter route that's part of daily life on the Stavanger Peninsula. Two million people use it to cross the Boknafjord each year. This route is very important. It's the second largest route in the country. So um, people need this, uh, these boats to work. The ferry makes 42 crossings daily. Today, sea fog is restricting visibility. Captain Vikaron must draw on all his skill to make the crossing safely. And when it's uh, bad visibility, the radar is the most important uh, instrument. You are steering, and you also keep an eye on the course and the speed. Because of the weather, it's a lot of challenges here. I'm just uh, turning the boat now to get a better angle for the waves, so it gets much uh, calmer in the boat. Below deck, the Mastrofjord is no ordinary ferry. It's technically innovative, powered by liquefied natural gas, or LNG. Gas that's been cooled to minus 162 Celsius, shrinking it 600 times and liquefying it for easy transportation and storage. There were built five prototypes of this kind of ferry and there's a new technology. It shows that the world is moving forward as a new step. The ferry's powerful gas engines are some of the cleanest afloat. Ship's mechanic Ulrich Kjöpeset and chief engineer Rolf Nielsen keep them running smoothly. There you go. I started working here for four years ago. I didn't know uh, so much about uh, LNG. I think it's very positive. You don't have to uh, change oil. It's so clean, it never gets black. It looks beautiful. Tonight, Rolf and Ulrich will oversee the refueling of the Mastra Fjord. At a nearby storage plant, LNG destined for the ferry is being collected for delivery by truck. Boats can also be refueled from another ship at sea or from a station on land. The Master Fjord is on a tight schedule, and delivering LNG by truck offers the most flexibility. A gas car, are you ready? Luke, are you ready? The refueling is a safe operation. Rolf and Ulrich ensure everything runs according to plan. Now you can open 354 and 352. Open 354 and 352. Tank car, you know I open for the nitrogen. Mist forms as warm air contacts the freezing cold pipes that the LNG is pumped through. The refueling process takes 90 minutes. Once complete, the Master Fjord has enough fuel to operate for up to eight days. Traditional shipping emissions tend to have a high sulfur concentration. From 2015, the EU will enforce strict new emission limits on air quality. It's a change the Master Fjord's owners, Fjord One, are ready for. We consider ourselves as leader in the field of LNG. We put in operation the world's first uh, LNG ferry 
and today we have 12 such ferries running. All in all, this is a step in the right direction in terms of finding environmentally friendly transport solutions. At the Shell Technology Center in Amsterdam, Tim Last tests and improves the raw natural gas that is refined to make the LNG product. Before we produce the LNG, we have to remove all those components like uh, hydrogen sulfide and CO2. Here in Amsterdam, we are trying to uh, improve current processes and to develop new processes for the future. And part of my job is to help to improve the solvents we use for cleaning up natural gas uh, coming out of the ground. New solvents are necessary to make the process more efficient and make the gas cleaner because otherwise it's not possible to uh, liquefy uh, the natural gas. Tim and his team have been working for many years to develop the refining process. Scientific research that's crucial to the success of LNG. LNG as a transportation fuel for the marine sector is going to be big. So we look at inland waterways, we look at the Baltics, some of the coastal areas in the US. These are the early adopters of tighter emissions controls. But over time, this is going to spread to more and more ports, more and more routes. And LNG is really one of the best ways to cope with those emissions constraints. The benefits of LNG are making waves across commercial shipping. In the small fishing port of Okraham, trawlermen Jorgen Runhall and Henrik Andersen are excited about what they've heard. There's a lot of changes out there with fishing and, and with sailing. We have to think more and more about the environment. You see around here the ferries have started to use LNG, the newest ones. Not yet we have the technology for the small ships like we have, but maybe bigger fishing ships. And I think that's a step in the right direction. Treat the North Sea nice, so we can live on this fishing for many years. LNG is not an immediate solution for Jorgen and Henrik in their small fishing boats but it is already a reality today with lots more potential. The future of LNG as a transportation fuel is not restricted to marine. It's going to be used in road transportation, but also in mining and in rail, anywhere where fuel consumption is high and, and they're looking for emissions control. In aspiring to be the world's most competitive and innovative energy company, it's important for us to be at the forefront of new technologies. The need for energy is increasing. In order to preserve our unique environments, the world needs smart and effective solutions. LNG is an important part of this journey.